L-O Papper people, as well as iNapper people. I have finally concluded my test of the iNap, the intermittent negative air pressure device. This was sent to me by Somnix. If you are not familiar with the device, this is the device. You put this thing in your mouth, you turn this on. Can you hear it going? It's like a kitten purring. What this does is it sucks the air out of your oral cavity. And in doing so, it's gonna pull forward all the tongue and the soft tissue, the palate, the uvula, pulls it up and out of the way of your upper airway. The theory being that this opens up your airway more, alleviating obstructive sleep apnea, rearrows, snoring, things like that. So instead of CPAP using continuous positive air pressure, this uses intermittent negative air pressure. Now, why is it intermittent? Because you put it in your mouth and as the air is being sucked out, eventually all the air is gone. It's basically vacuum sealed. Once it's vacuum sealed, there's no need for it to continually continue sucking out. So it's very efficient as far as energy usage. If for some reason you breach that, you have a seal breach or a seal leak, it's gonna turn back on and try to get that air out of there, creating another void. That's the device. If you haven't watched my other videos at this point, please do so as they're gonna be a little more helpful as far as understanding how this works. But I tested the iNAP for about six nights. Now the first two nights, I drooled like a dog. Now the third, fourth, and fifth nights were golden, no drool. I slept six to seven hours, so I feel like I had a really good grasp of the unit. I was used to it, and then I began testing. And I tested it using my home sleep diagnostic equipment. It's a type two sleep study, so this is with EEG. This is everything. Everything that you would have in a sleep lab, I had on myself. If you're interested in such a, such a test for yourself, axgsleepdiagnostics.com, it's my own business. And my God, we're, we're the best. So I attached electrodes to myself. First night, I did it using the iNAP device. The very next night, I tested it without using the iNAP device to get a baseline and then to get a treatment sample. Here's what that looked like. It also gives me a chance to show my hairy nipples. My niece Alexandra assures me that middle-aged hairy man nipples are trending on TikTok. I'm using these because they're a lot cheaper. And that's the way I roll. This one's a ground. It doesn't really do anything, but if it falls off, everything looks like crap. And Alexander, you promised me a TikTok channel. I want to see that thing, kid. Now, if you would like to sponsor an exciting channel such as this, go ahead and contact me. And they're more or less out of my face. Besides all this stuff, the Somnix iNAP is gonna go in and we'll start recording. Fingers crossed this goes well tonight. This is night two. This is without the Somnix iNAP. You know what? I've actually reused all of the electrodes from the night before. We're in California here. We reuse everything. You recycle everything, including toilet paper. Yeah, let that sink in. Okay, we've got another point of contention too. Our good friend Nick, old Nico, he was talking smack on my hookup. Now, I don't take too kindly to that, Nico. I don't take too kindly to that at all. You know what? I was in the iPad. Try hooking yourself up in an iPad. It's not exactly what we were trained to do. So, I was thinking about you, buddy. <laughs> I'm doing a little cleaner job, as you can clearly see. Feast on my man nipples one more time. I have to organize these a little better. I'm trying to please Nico. That's the way we do it in the States, Nico. We just kind of slap shit together and make it work. Godspeed, Thick Boy. I've decided to name tonight Thick Boy. We got Lanky Lefty for the first night, Thick Boy for this night. Thick Boy, Thick Boy. After I was done, I scored the data. I have some videos of me scoring that. Scoring basically means I go over the data a couple times. I, I stage it for the sleep staging. Then I go through it one more time and put respiratory problems in there. If I see a RERA, a respiratory effort related arousal, I see a hypopnea, I see an apnea, I tag those. And then after I'm done doing both of those, I generate a report. Here's the report. I created a poll. When I compare the INAP PSG to my non-INAP PSG, what do you think will happen to my apnea hypopnea index? 19% felt the INAP AHI will be higher. INAP fail. 15% felt that the baseline non-INAP AHI will be higher. An INAP success. 
and 14% felt that the INAP and non-INAP AHI will be about the same, a scientific meh. But that leaves 52%. 52% of you felt Lanky will achieve a level of thickness unseen in humans. You have no idea how right you are. Big booty Happer people, all of that suffering just to get to these data points. Now, we have on January 10th right here, patient name Lanky Lefty over here. The next day, January 11th, we have Thick Boy. Both of them are me. This first one here on the left is, let me actually, let me actually do this so you can actually see that. So you can see the name. We have the INAP night, and then we have the non-INAP night. Obviously, I'm gonna be thicker on the non-INAP night. Let's take a look at these numbers, and then I'm gonna tell you something where I think I screwed up. My apologies. We have a ton of similarity on both of these. First, let's take a look down here. Stage N1, we have 4.8%, 7.2% on the baseline night with no INAP. Uh, N2 sleep, stage two, we have basically 61% versus 53%. And we have stage three, slow wave sleep, I have 3% versus about 9%. Then we have REM sleep at 31.4 and then 30.9. Really, really close, pretty much on all those across the board. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, INAP night, while I'm using INAP, intermittent negative air pressure, I have an AHI of zero, I have a REM AHI of zero, and I have an RDI of 2.0. So AHI, for those who don't know, apnea hypopnea index, number of apneas and hypopneas per hour of sleep. REM is just the, the same thing, number of apneas and hypopneas per hour of REM only sleep. RDI pretty much includes everything, everywhere. Low blood oxygen level is 92 on this side. Moving over to the non-INAP night, we have an AHI of 0 0.9. We have a REM AHI of 2.8, so already I'm worse. We have an RDI of 3.0, and then the low blood oxygen level of 90%. So I'm technically worse on the baseline night, but really none of this is even diagnosable. Why is this not diagnosable? That's part of my screw up. I'll get to it later. Stop, don't rub it in, I don't like it. We have to move to the next page. Now some of this stuff I kind of, I kind of ignored, ignore the heart rate. Usually I have to, there's artifact in there I didn't take out. Don't worry about that. Uh, supine and left side. I have a little bit of right side on this one, but basically more or less the same as far as positioning, but we have a breakdown based on position and sleep stage. So we have REM supine, I'm at eight. REM non-supine at three. If we move over to the baseline night, I'm basically the same, just very slightly lower but then I'm very slightly higher in REM non-supine as far as my uh, respiratory events. So technically, uh, I'm better numbers-wise with the INAP. That is clear. With the INAP, my numbers are nothing. These aren't even diagnosable. And where was the problem with this? My problem was on my baseline night, I slept much, much better than I normally do if I'm not using CPAP. Typically, if I don't use CPAP, I sleep like crap, horrible. My wife will poke me, bump me, saying I'm snoring. She didn't do that at all. And I didn't see much snoring when I was scoring my study. And the reason for this, this is the reason I believe, is that there's typically an after effect when you use CPAP. And what I mean by that is, if you have a long-term user of CPAP that's gonna go in for a sleep study and a retritration, Typically the doctor asks you to stop using CPAP for about a week. Now this is pure suffering if you're used to CPAP and you like it. But the reason for this is there's kind of an after effect where your tissues kind of remember that they're being pushed back and so they're a little more tense. In not using CPAP, they're allowed to kind of become flabby and flaccid and ooey and gooey and get in your upper airway and cause all the symptoms again. So there's kind of a stair-step effect of even if you don't use CPAP, you're still good for like, sometimes you know, you, sometimes you can be better off uh, for a night or two, and then all of a sudden hell breaks loose in your, your, your garbage again. I can't remember the name for this effect, but I feel like I may have had something similar when I didn't use the INAP for one night after having used it for six nights consecutively. That's my theory. 
at some point I'm gonna retest myself without all that stuff again, but I had to send my devices out for testing. But I really feel like that may have affected it. I actually think my baseline numbers are much higher. I actually think I'm worse. That said, you can see that the reports show I'm better. I'm gonna include a lot more. I'm gonna be doing a review of the actual INAP device. I'll let you know all my thoughts on it as soon as I kind of ponder it over and think about it from every possible angle. Hopefully you enjoyed this. This is a little precursor to it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, subscribe if you would like. I would really appreciate that. I love it when you guys comment what you think in the, in the comment section down below. And if you, if you, if you like this content, it is super hard to create. Stuff like this, it is very, very hard to do. So please consider becoming a Patreon of mine at patreon.com. Links are in the description box down below. I do appreciate every single one of you that is a Patreon subscriber right now, as well as a YouTube member, as well as those of you who make PayPal donations. All that is super helpful. It very much, it very much frees up my time so I can make these videos for you guys. All right, also, if you're looking for a pap therapy analysis with me for an Oscar data review, please do so. Check out axgsleepdiagnostics.com. I love talking to you people. It's really fun, and I think we both get something out of it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye. Wow, you've got yourself a stinky mask. Pick up some Mask Bright today. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Patricia Espelong, Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Matthew Lilly, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters, as well as my YouTube members, especially Susie Balvez. I left you off the last one. I'm so sorry. Big boy. Big boy. Big boy.